Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another unofficial Windows version. And this one right here is called Windows XP 7 Royale Edition. This was actually submitted to me by one of you guys out there and basically what it is, as you can probably tell by the name and kind of the design of the setup process right here, this is a version of Windows XP that is themed to look more like Windows 7. Um, and the changes really start to take place at this phase of the setup right here. The initial setup, you know, where it's copying files over to the hard disk, uh, doesn't really look any different compared to a regular copy of Windows XP Professional. But at this point, you can see there is a totally new design. It definitely looks a lot more like Windows 7, and that is obviously by design. Uh, now this ISO file comes in at 699 megabytes, so it just barely fits on a single CD. And just for comparison, a regular copy of Windows XP Pro RTM comes in at 488 megabytes. So this is over 200 megabytes larger than the standard version of XP. One of the other changes introduced with this unofficial version of Windows is what you can see on screen right now with the actual setup wizard prompts where it kind of asks you for your regional and language settings, your product key, username, all that good stuff. It actually has a bit of a custom design to it. There's this new image over here on the left side that obviously corresponds to whatever the wizard's talking about. So like right now it's asking for your regional and language settings. It's got this custom image of the Windows Vista wallpaper with a bunch of different flags on it uh, to kind of signify that you're talking about what region that you're in. And now when it's asking for your name and organization, it's got this icon right here. And right here it's gonna ask you for your uh, computer name. We're just going to type in 7 Royale VM. Uh, you can see once again, there's some uh, custom images over here on the left side. We're not going to bother putting an admin password, but everything, I mean, even this icon up here, the administrator password icon, all have been changed and kind of updated to look a little bit more like Windows 7. We're just going to click on next here with all of that information entered. It's going to ask us for our time and date settings. We're going to go with these default options and click on next. And uh, now it is going to continue on with the setup. Now we have taken a look at Windows XP Vienna Edition, which had a goal of making it look like Windows Vista, but we haven't taken a look at the, uh, one like this, so it makes it look like Windows 7. You can also notice that it is doing a couple of things in the background, um, but it also removes references to Windows XP and just changes it to Windows. This is as far as I can tell the uh, standard text that's usually here. So right now it's talking about Windows Update, but the references, you know, where it's talking specifically about Windows XP uh, have been removed and, they, and it now just says Windows. You see it says Windows Professional instead of Windows XP Professional. And this right here is also a pretty cool feature. Uh, it actually allows you to select a custom OEM logo. So you can actually specify what OEM logo you want to show up in uh, the computer properties. And so there's a ton of them here. I mean, you've got Asus, Compact, there's Apple even, Packard, Bell, you can click on next. And I mean, you, you can even just choose like a Intel logo or an AMD logo. Let's actually go with uh, Packard Bell, why not? Uh, and just, you know, it's going to say, please wait, it's going to apply that for us. And this is the next kind of custom element that was added into this. And that is the free sky CD, uh, driver auto installer, where it basically detects what devices you have on your system and it attempts to install the appropriate drivers for them. And that portion right there was actually an automated process where you didn't have to actually be there for everything else. Like for the regional language settings, that was not automated for the OEM logo selector. That was not automated. You had to select that. So you'd Still have to actually be present at your computer during this process. Uh, I know we've taken a look at a couple versions of Windows that really automate the entire process and require no user input. This is not one of them, but it definitely has a couple of elements that are fully automated like we just saw. And so it's rebooting right here, and you can see that the boot screen has remained unchanged. However, the like OEM logo kind of before it actually launches into the out-of-box experience has been changed. And right here is actually where it launches into the out-of-box experience. Now there is actually a song playing in the background right now that uh, I believe is copyrighted, so I'm going to mute it. Uh, and just kind of overlay my own background music like I usually do. But you can see that uh, it kind of gives us some more information about this unofficial version of Windows. So uh, this was made by the Soft VNN staff. I assume this is their website right here. So it says, Welcome to Windows XP SP3 2010 by Soft VNN staff. So at this point, it's not identifying itself as 7 Royale Edition, uh, but rather XP Service Pack 3 2010. Uh, the background here is from Windows 7, but they've got their logo kind of just put in here in the center. 
uh, there are some Windows 7 icons. This button here is still the same that it was in NXP. It's just been changed uh, from the green color to this more grayish color. We're going to click Next here. And uh, you can see here there's some more Windows 7 elements, um, you know, with the uh, two different shields here. Uh, we're going to type in our name as VM once again. And there we go. So it says, congratulations, you're ready to go. To learn more about the exciting new features of Windows, take the product course. So this, I believe, is just the same text that was in regular XP. We're going to click on Finish. And you can see that the welcome screen here uh, does have the Windows 7 background, but it just says welcome. There's no branding down here at the bottom or anything like that. And here we are logged into the system. So I actually went ahead and changed the screen resolution so you can see everything a little bit better. So right off the bat, you can see that it definitely has that Windows 7 look going for it with the taskbar down here that has been themed. Uh, opening up the start menu, you can see that has been themed as well. Um, there is no arrow transparency. There's no program like true transparency or anything like that, but it's still a pretty decent recreation at how Windows 7 actually looks. Um, one of the uh, custom programs that has been added to kind of mimic another Windows 7 feature, or almost mimic a Windows 7 feature, is this sidebar right here. Now we know that Windows 7 didn't have a sidebar like Vista did, but it did have gadgets. So you cannot actually drag these widgets and kind of place them wherever you want on the desktop, but it still acts as a way for you to kind of get quick access to certain things. So you see up here, it's got the date and time, it's got your shutdown, restart, and sleep controls. Um, this button right here actually allows you to set the time and date. Uh, you've got a Google search uh, function right here where you can actually click this magnifying glass and search on Google. Below that you have your two different drives which this local disk D is just the uh, CD drive. Now this does not show you the exact percentage of how much space that you have taken up on your drive but it does kind of indicate that to you with the uh, little progress bar there. We can obviously click on this to open up a Windows Explorer window. Uh, we're going to get to this in a minute though. We're going to go ahead and move on down on the sidebar. You've got your CPU uh, usage indicator, your memory usage indicator. Below that, you've got your Windows Media Player widget right there. Uh, below that, you have basically a ton of different shortcuts to various applications on your system. Um, so you see we've got like My Computer, Documents, Control Panel, Task Manager. You can't really see it, but there are um, arrows down here that you can click on to actually advance through this list. So just kind of giving you quick access to a couple of uh, frequently used system applications and settings. Now, going into the Start menu here and opening up all programs, at first glance, it will not really look like there's a whole lot of third-party applications that have been installed. So first up, we've got Styler right here, which is the program that is actually theming the system for us. Uh, and when you open it, it just says that it's already running, but you can see it down in the system tray. Um, we also have the only other third-party application we have in here is under Win Tools, and that is the NVNA sidebar. That is the name of this sidebar program over here. Everything else, uh, you know, accessories folder, your, all your standard accessories, games, you have all of your standard games. Actually, you don't have the internet games. Uh, you, you only have the kind of offline games. Uh, startup, um, you've got your, you know, these two items that start up with the system. Uh, games, like all of the icons have been changed. That is one thing. Every single like program icon in, in here has been changed to their Windows 7 counterpart. So like these games here, like this is the newer Spider Solitaire icon, um, newer address book icon, newer synchronized icon, all of that good stuff. Uh, Windows Explorer has a new icon as well. Um, but there are actually a lot more custom programs that have been installed, but they are not contained in the All Programs folder. They're actually contained in the Control Panel. So let's actually open that up, which you can not actually open up by going and clicking on a Control Panel here. This just actually gives you a pop-out list of everything. So you have to actually right-click on it and click on Open to open it up in uh, Windows Explorer here. But you can see that there are substantially more options in here than in your standard install of Windows XP. You obviously do have all of your standard settings just with Windows 7 themed icons, although some of them like automatic updates looks to have not really been changed. Um, that globe icon might have been changed, but the standard Windows XP flag is still here. But you see that you've got a lot more than just the standard settings in here. You've got CPU-Z to actually view your CPU information. Um, if we go down here, you've got hardware monitor, GPU-Z. You've got HD2 and mem test. Uh, scrolling down, you've got uh, a shortcut to regit in here, which is not normally in here. Um, you even have Tweak UI. Yes, the official Microsoft tweaking program for Windows XP, which I did a full video on. 
up in the cards if you want to go ahead and check it out. Yes, this is in here, but it shows up in control panel rather than inside of all programs. So they've actually moved uh, a lot of the kind of custom programs that they have installed into control panel because most of these are tools and it's actually a good place for them because uh, you just basically open this up and kind of get access to all of your tools uh, that you have on the system. So definitely really neat. I haven't actually seen that done before in one of these unofficial Windows versions. Now, if we open up my computer right here, you're going to see that that Windows 7 theme obviously takes effect across Windows Explorer as well. There's a totally new design here. This sidebar over here has been customized, new icons all across the board, which also has the uh, Vista Drive indicator program, which basically gives you a, basically what we had going on up here, where it actually shows you, again, not in an actual percentage number, but it actually shows you uh, with this little progress bar how much space you've got taken up on your hard drive. Uh, so we can right click on this, go to properties, there's a new hard drive icon up here. But uh, this installation of Windows is taking up 2.71 gigabytes on the hard drive. Now for reference, a standard installation of Windows XP only requires 1.5 gigabytes. So this is actually taking up almost double uh, the hard drive space that regular XP takes up, which is very interesting. But that's obviously because there's a lot more stuff installed than your regular install of XP. Uh, we can go into the C drive. You can see that all of these folder icons have been changed. Interestingly enough, not to the same folder icon that Vista and 7 use. It actually kind of reminds me of uh, the icon that you know Vista and 7 use for your documents and you know pictures and your user folder. Uh, it actually looks kind of like that, just with a blank folder inside of it, as opposed to a you know themed one around like your documents, like in this case up here. Uh, scrolling down, you can also see some custom icons for things like Explorer and RegEdit. These are both totally custom icons that are not in Vista or 7. Uh, so you kind of have like a mixture. You have some um, icons that are totally new, but you also have some icons that are uh, t either taken directly from Windows 7 or themed to look like icons from Windows 7. Either way, it does a pretty good job at kind of recreating uh, a lot of the aspects of a Windows 7 installation. One of the other cool things they did is they added this custom toolbar right here, which kind of mimics uh, one of the toolbars that displays in uh, Windows Explorer in Vista and 7. Organize right here, when you click on it, does not do what it does in Vista or 7. It actually opens up a directory structure of all the folders on your system. Um, but that's actually a neat little shortcut to it. Um, folder options opens up your folder options, and this whole image, like this image that's on the left of all of these uh, menus, you're going to see that throughout the entire system. This is very, very common. All of these properties windows have been modified, uh, or, or at least most of them have been modified to kind of uh, have this uh, new folder does what it says. It will actually create a new folder down here at the bottom. And you also have your view control. So if you want to change, uh, you know, how the icons display, you can do that. Uh, definitely really, really nice. There's a search function as well, which when you click on it does not actually allow you to search from up in here like Vista and Set. Um, but it actually just brings up the standard XP search function, which is still pretty cool. One of the other things that I want to show you guys is in the My Computer Properties. So we can right click on this, go to Properties, and you can see, like I was saying before with this uh, image, this is going to take effect on every single one of these tabs. There is an image here, um, and this has been completely revamped. Uh, you've got your Windows information up here. You can see right here is where it's actually identifying itself as Windows 7 Royale XP. Uh, and here is our custom OEM logo down here that we specified during the setup process. Last but not least, what I actually want to do is something that was suggested by one of you guys out there, and that is actually opening up Task Manager on these unofficial Windows versions and showing you guys the current system usage statistics. So that is basically like how much CPU usage the system is using and how much memory that the system is using. But if we open up Task Manager, you're also gonna notice that once again, that whole custom image thing is still going on, and that is the case for the Applications and the Processes tab. Uh, so we can obviously see what applications are running. We've obviously got the sidebar program. So we are currently running 22 processes on the system. Uh, these are all of them right here. If we go under performance here, you can see the CPU usage graph. So this is actually, if we actually maximize this here, you can see it a little bit better. So the CPU usage is obviously going to fluctuate, but you can see that it's kind of fluctuating between 2%, 11%, 16, back down to seven, back down to two. Uh, and for the page file usage, we are using 142 megabytes uh, right there. So 
there you go. So guys, there you have it. That is a uh, in-depth look at Windows XP 7 Royale Edition. Again, a pretty cool little unofficial Windows version. Uh, again, we haven't really taken a look at one of these on this channel before, one that kind of makes uh, Windows XP look like Windows 7. I thought that this was pretty cool. Uh, be sure to let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see more like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times per week here on this channel. And as always, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.